Hello everyone, welcome back to Z Physics. Today we're going to be solving a question, a tricky question on electricity from the 2016 Section 2 Enger Pass paper for admission at Cambridge University. This is the paper that you'll be sitting if you're interested in doing engineering at Cambridge University. If your exam is coming up in November, first of all, good luck. Good luck with your preparation as well. Have a browse through my channel you'll be able to find lots of past paper solutions and video walkthroughs on this subject. Just a little disclaimer as well that these are not official solutions and I'm not affiliated with Cambridge University and um, therefore if you spot a more efficient way of doing a problem or a mistake do please get in touch. Additionally, don't forget to check out the Cambridge Admissions website where you're able to find lots of relevant official information for applying for Cambridge. Okay, well, now let's have a look at this question. So it's question two from section two, 2016. The figure below shows a network of three non-zero resistances, R1, R2, and R3. Okay, well, none of these uh, are zero resistances. Which of the following statements must be correct? Now, I'm just going to assume that the three resistances are not the same. So let's say if that's the case, the current will split. It's always worthwhile in those questions just to even make up some values for the current. So let's say there's five amps going through there. And let's say that we have, I don't know, three amps going through there, uh, which will leave two amps in the other branch of the circuit. Okay, well, let's have a look. So statement A, the current through resistances R1 and R2 are the same. Well, that's not the case. In fact, no currents are going to be the same in this question. So we can cross this one out. Part D says that the voltages across R1 and R2 are the same. Once again, this is not necessarily correct. It could be, but it doesn't have to be. Part E, the voltages across R1 and R3 are the same. Well, that's not going to be the case. Same as above, because the voltages across R2 and R3 will have to be the same by Kirchhoff's second law. Oh, wait, have a look at part F. The voltages across resistance R2 and R3 are the same that definitely has to be true because they are in parallel so that the correct answer is f okay part b which of the following expression gives the correct current through the voltage source so if the we have a voltage v across here which one of those expressions will give us the current okay well I'm going to start off by finding the total current just in the parallel branch. So I'm going to call this, let's say, R subscript P for parallel. Well, this will just be equal to 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 raised to the power of minus 1. Okay, let's put everything underneath a common denominator. So what we're going to get is R3 over R2, R3 plus R2 over R2, R3 raised to the power of minus 1. Now we're ready to add up this fraction. So this will be equal to R3 plus R2 over this raised to the power of minus 1. Now now, because this is raised to the power of minus 1, we can just flip this fraction. So this will be equal to R2, R3 divided by R3 plus R2. Okay, well, this circuit is essentially equivalent to uh, this circuit here with one resistor connected in series to the total of the parallel branch, which I've called RP. Okay, well, let's find the total resistance in the circuit, and I'm going to call that R total. This will then be equal to R2, R3 over R3 plus R2. This is just the parallel, parallel branch, which is in series with R1. 
Okay, now we need to do a little bit more algebra. So we need to multiply this side of the expression by R3 plus R2, both the uh, top and the bottom of the fraction. So this will be equal to R2, R3 over R3 plus R2 plus now R1 times by this, which is R3 plus R2 divided by R3 plus R2. Okay, now we're ready to put everything underneath a common denominator. Okay, so this is going to equal R2 R3 plus R1 times uh, R3 plus R1 times R2 divided by R3 plus R2. Okay, we're almost there. So this is actually a good expression now for R total. Now all we need to do is just apply Ohm's law across the uh, the power supply so remember ohm's law simply says that v is equal to i r where r in this case is going to be the r total so this means that i will be equal to v uh, divided by r total and remember dividing by a fraction is exactly the same as multiplying by the inverse so the inverse or 1 over r total is just this fraction flipped up so it's going to be r3 plus r2 over r2 r3 plus r1 r3 plus r1 r2 now all we need to do really is just copy this down here so this will be equal to uh, should we just write it down underneath here with a square of space so the current i will be equal to the potential difference v multiplied by r3 plus r2 let's put some brackets because we're multiplying we don't want to confuse the order of the operations divided by r2 r3 plus R1, R3 plus R1, R2. Now, hopefully, that's an answer. So let's have a look. Uh, yep, this is equal to answer A, which is the correct answer. Okay, folks, well, hopefully, you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully, you found this useful. Have a browse through my channel where you'll be able to find uh, quite a lot more revision lessons and uh, additionally past paper solutions to all of the entrance exams. Good luck if you're sitting the end uh, in the next few weeks. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.